This time on Whatever We Want, we talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. Finally, spoilers major, huge, huge, Big huge boy spoilers, spoilers ahead. Huge. There are time codes down in the description if you would like to jump around. We are also joined by a very special guest, uh, Ringo Tavares. Uh-huh. He is also known as 60 Second Comic Facts on TikTok, Instagram, all that's jazz. Super excited. He has some great insights. We talk everything from the future of Tom Holland Spider-Man, who didn't get the call to reprise their role and why. Um, Easter eggs, two old movies, all that and more. Enjoy! Yeah. Pre butter, pre pre butter, butter, pre butter, peanut butter. Daniel, how you doing? It's so good to be back. Dang. It's been We're so back. long for the world, the audience. Oh. It's not been that long, but since the last time we spoke, I have drove across the country over three weeks. I got COVID. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm I still so. happy. I'm coming off the end of it. Um, but yeah, I have a new apartment, new notebook, new year almost. Happy almost new year. And Spider-Man No Way Home. Let's go, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, this is. I think this will be our last episode of 2021, actually. Um, yeah, that's crazy to think about, dude. Thank you, Over everyone, for a great year. We're going to be talking about Boba Fett next time. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we talk with Ringo, mm-hmm. um, 60 Second Comic Facts. Uh, check out all of his links in the description. We talk, plug it later, but also just check it out. Um, if you get a chance, his like uh, Twitch, he's doing some stuff, his TikTok, his Instagram, all that. Yeah, super huge thanks for him being on the show again. A lot of great comic and Star Wars content. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, go check he it out. He seriously knows his stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm ex- excited for you guys to watch it. Ready to jump into the intro? Yes. You may want us to talk about this or that, but we don't care. We're going to talk about whatever we want. Blip. Welcome back to wherever we want the podcast where we, Jake and Daniel, two devilishly handsome gentlemen, talk about movies, TV shows, give me behind the scenes insights of making techniques, all that jazz, and more. I mean, you know what we're talking about Spider Man No Way Home. And I feel like we've rambled enough, so let's jump into it. Here we yep. go. All right, bam. We are in the uh, main segment here. We are joined by Ringo Tavares. Did I pronounce that correctly? I yes, know yes, you just you told me, but I instantly <laughs> forgot. <laughs> okay. You're fine. All right. Uh, you might also know him as uh, 60 Second uh, Comic Facts. Thank you so much for joining us. It is um, an honor and a, pl- and a privilege to like have you here. Um, and we're going to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. Everyone ready? Yep. Ready. Yes. All right. So what is everyone's overall thoughts just off the top of the movie? Dude. Amazing. It's Okay. So <laughs> you know my position when it comes to like animation and stuff. So it's not... It's Spider-Verse is still number one for me personally. But oh, okay. this movie is like... Mm, it's like right there. Okay. What do you think, Ringo? That, that's what I, I I agree. The same thing. Like Spider Verse did it first, so therefore I'm like it's got to be higher. <laughs> but then I'm like, you know, they brought they brought the live action Spider Man in, and this is since you know Spider Man Two back in 2005. I do believe that's when it came out. Uh, this is the first Peter Parker story. Like, like yeah. the 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 consequences of being Peter Parker because like. When you go back and look at it, because I rewatched the the first the first two before I watched this one, uh-huh. you see Tom just having a blast and just having so much fun. But then this story really caps in like that's not what Peter Parker's story is all about. Yeah. This whole like his whole trilogy was a long origin story of learning the tragedy of being one Peter Parker. And yeah. uh, when he met the other Peters from the the multiverse, he saw like these guys are alone too. Like they did it by themselves. They never had any teams or anything with them. And it's just, it was heartbreaking and amazing. And uh, I just, I could go on all day. Just about it. It was one of the best live action Spider-Man movies. Like it beat Spider-Man two, which was at my top. Mm -hmm. Wow. Longest time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. As as soon as the credits rolled after the Dr. Strange trailer, I was like, this beats Spider-Man two by a long shot not just because of the other spider-man but the the story of you know just the tragedy of peter parker yeah i i like yeah. what you said i want to take it back to what you said about like this whole trilogy was kind of in the first two movies was him just kind of like having a good time yeah. and i think that's a very key difference between these movies and andrew garfield and toby mcguire their movies like they kind of had the great power, great responsibility speech right at the beginning of their movies. And that, I think, was their central ideology that, like, framed them. It was really interesting. I think we saw Tom before he had that central ideology of, like, uh, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And I think it was him kind of trying to find that 
like what really defined him and we didn't get that till the end of the trilogy which i thought was like a unique kind of spin on it like the first one he was like in his first movie homecoming he wanted to be like an avenger and like uh, he was just trying to like that that was like his driving goal and then at the end he was like maybe this isn't what i wanted in the second one he was still kind of figuring it out and then this third one with the aunt, the death of aunt may like i think this that really like solidified in him that this is going to be his core moral compass moving forward. So uh, I'm interested to see what is going to happen in the future. What do you guys think is going to happen in the future with this character? First of all, he's probably going to need a social security card, forge yeah. a birth certificate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're thinking like logistically. Logistically. Because like, he's, cause he's, you know, pretty much an Avenger living in, one of the worst flats you can probably find in New York where they probably didn't need any background information or anything. And right. I just, I, I don't know. I wanted to see more on that. Cause I'm so glad they showed it to us instead of making us wait until the next movie to see what right. Peter Parker's life would have been like. Yeah. I just, I, I really want to see how they do the whole, how he reinvents Peter Parker. Yeah. That's one thing I'm excited to see about. And then, the college years because we know yes. he's going to go he's not mm-hmm. going to mit he's going to go to new york university yep. and i hope that he meets maybe a felicia hardy there maybe i've heard rumors norman that. Osborne. Want that i've seen so many funny memes where it's like uh like i think i saw tiktok where like it was peter like walking up like to, like people at college are like hey i'm peter parker and they're like this other guy's like i'm norman osborne and he's like flashes back to, to talking to like toby and andrew and he's like oh no 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 i'm not talking to you <laughs> <laughs> not becoming friends with you <laughs> but yeah i think that'd be skirt around be that cool. one <laughs> yeah we might get like a gwen stacy potentially even though usually she becomes four mj maybe they'll switch that up i don't know daniel what do you want to want to see i mean spider-man has so many love interests so really you could have like any in the college years at that point i mean there's obviously the popular ones like felicity we could also have something like like Cindy come out somewhere. Uh, God, who's the one that's uh, Cooper? Is she like a detective no or cop idea. or something? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, she's a cop. Okay. So you can have a whole different like avenues of where this could go because you got to also think about like his relationship is also building up as Spider Man again. Where at the beginning, where like everybody's like, oh, he's a menace, you know, he killed Mysterio. But at the end, we start people like recovering with his or him recovering with his um, reputation and, you know, see where that also leads with. Uh, the cops and other social avenues in uh, New York. So I don't know. There could be a lot that goes on there. Do you think MJ will ever and Ned will ever remember him? Because I know a lot of people point out that she has the necklace on still. Yeah. 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 She's still wearing that. And, you know, it's like, why am I wearing this? I don't yeah. know. Just when the first time they made, well, the last time they made eye contact, she's just looking at him like, I've seen this person yeah. before. But Ned, no, no, Ned just, I don't know. He just didn't seem like, he was just too distracted by the donut, you know? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, I would be too. <laughs> it looks like a good donut. <laughs> he seemed a little bit more confident without being friends with Peter Parker. I don't know. It's it's kind of scary. He might be leading up to a hobgoblin arc. I, yeah. His I like, like to see jacket that. was kind of similar colors to mm-hmm. hobgoblin. Yeah. I, I would be interested to see that. Especially it would be funny after he promised never to turn evil against him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was something I was like, they're going to play off that. Like, He's going to promise that in this life, but in another life, yeah, that, that promise ain't there. Yeah. I wonder, uh, yeah, I, I always, I wonder about those, that legit, the, that logistically, like if someone were just to get like deleted from life and you forget them, like, but like, say it's like your best friend, like Daniel, for example, like say like you, I forgot all my memory of you. Like, how would that impact me? Cause I feel like th- so much of who I am is based on the people around me. So if like a core yeah. person in my life is like removed, I wonder like what fills that void or how that feels. And I think we're seeing that in MJ a little bit. Like she's like, what the heck? Like th- this guy is like, I have something weird with him. But like, I just wonder logistically how that would work. Like if, I don't know how you delete someone from your memory, if they were so fundamental in your upbringing and who you are as a person today, like I wonder how that works. Do you guys have any thoughts on on that? I think it would impact someone really deeply, like especially if it was your lifelong friend, like kind yeah. of seemed like Ned and Peter were. Yeah. It seemed like Peter was the one protecting Ned from a lot of things. So like right. maybe Ned has just become like a pretty mean dude because he's the only one there to suffer Flash Thompson's, you know. Oh, rap. maybe so that maybe that will drive True. him to become more evil and yeah. like hobgoblin. Like that's yeah, an want, interesting yeah. spin. We'll want to get revenge because it seems like Peter's the one that was there like uh, you know, protecting Ned, being the one like, 
you know, you, you don't pick on Ned, but if there's not a Peter Parker there to do that, then people what's do pick happen on to Ned. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. That might, hmm. yeah, might I didn't be, think about that. That might be something cool to explore later. What What do you guys think? Speaking of Flash Thompson, though, with the Venom post credits, like what's just any thoughts oh, on yeah, that? Yeah, that's going to be interesting on how they play that out. Like we lost the other version of Eddie, right? So Tom Hardy, yeah. Yeah, so really if we somehow got into like Agent Venom territory, that would be very unique. I feel like that's something that like, like Marvel would do. Peter gets a symbiote and he goes all like super dark because I know there's similar stories of that. Where like he might have been what infected with like the Carnage symbiote and he like just went berserk. Uh, was that an ultimate? Uh, yeah, that was an ultimate. Yeah. What do you think, Ringo? I want to see Peter infected by it first. I want to see yeah a black suit, kind of like the comics, like because his suit and that was the closest comic book accurate Spider Man yeah. suit we've gotten to date. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're ready for a, a symbiote, like a proper symbiote story, and then you know instead of Eddie Brock receiving it after Peter maybe flash thompson's at church or something yeah and the symbiote he has the blonde gets on hair him. now yeah. yeah i would love to see an agent venom story because agent venom is just awesome <laughs> yeah that would be really cool to see maybe down the road like i mean they didn't they they confirm that there's like a new trilogy coming out right of spider-man yep. movies yeah dang i i just love movies guys i'm so excited we're, we're living in this time that all these movies it's are coming out. It's been amazing. Like it's, we have been so spoiled, especially this year with Marvel movies, not yeah. our Marvel projects, nine Marvel projects yeah. this year alone. That's crazy. It's, the year after like 2020. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. insane. Especially, yeah. <laughs> Dang. Like, I, Marvel have to keep pumping it out because everyone's going to, they just want it. Like, you know, we want the college trilogy and we want it now. <laughs> Yeah, we do. I know John Watts is taking a break from Spider Man and going to Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. I'm mm-hmm. excited that, for dude, that. That's gonna be so exciting. Oh, but speaking, sorry, just really quickly about John Watts. He was actually I this is a cool piece of trivia. I like didn't even clock, but like he was the first director to direct all three movies in a trilogy in like a solo character trilogy in the MCU. All the other ones have been huh. like two directors and then trade off to one or like vice versa. Or, like, three different ones, I think. Like, Iron Man was John Favreau twice. Then I forget the guy's name. It's in our other episode. And then Captain America was uh, the Rooster Brothers, the last two, and then the first one. So, like, I don't know. I thought that was cool that he – they finally got one. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got a director who uh, who knows how to make, you know, like, just come back and make, make his whole story, make his whole trilogy. Because yeah. I know with the Russo brothers, they, they really like to pick and projects they go yeah. on they almost did not do civil war like yeah i remember uh the the thing that they were talking about they said they were scared to talk to uh who was it the the head of marvel at the time about it and kevin feige just told them came in the door and said do civil war <laughs> regret it <laughs> i love the russo brothers and their marvel movies they've done i want them to come back and do some more because I, I i love the winter soldier in game in yeah. Infinity war mm-hmm. what project would you want them to come back and do Ooh. Oh, that's good. Uh, Secret Wars. Secret Wars. Okay. I, I know. I think yeah. they have a director for that already. Yeah. But I would love to see them do Secret Wars, especially because it's yeah. going to be a show instead of a movie. I think they, they could shine more if they have more time to work with. Yeah. yeah I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to kind of take a step back and like we were talking about the director. So some like movie info facts here. So this had a $200 million budget. And as of like two or three days ago, it crossed the $1 billion mark. And it's the first movie post pandemic to do that. So that's actually, that's really crazy and kind of cool to see that like movies aren't completely dead yet and cinemas aren't dead. So that's good. Um, So, uh, but I do want to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think? Like, do you think this movie will hold up? And do you think it's banking on nostalgia too much? Like, for example, if I were to show my kids this in 20 years and we just do like an MCU marathon and they haven't seen the Toby Maguire, Sam Raimi movies, and then the Andrew Garfield movies. I mean, if they haven't seen those, I'm being a bad father. I'm not raising my kids right. <laughs> but, like, say they haven't seen those, and they just see the MCU movies and then see this. Will they get that same effect as us who have, like, grown up on these movies kind of thing? Or is it banking on nostalgia a it's lot? It's not going to be the same effect, but I feel like it's still going to hit pretty good. Because what Ringo was saying earlier, where it's the Peter Parker story, right? That's something that's, yeah. that makes this movie different. And... Again, seeing this is the first time I think we've also seen a Peter lose Aunt May in film. 
Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it is. In film, yeah, yeah we so, saw it in the game, but yeah. So it's it's also just pulling on different strings there in that case. So I feel like when it comes to this version of Peter, they're not going to, like, in that example with the kids, like, they, they wouldn't get the concept of, like, Toby and, and Andrew, obviously, but... They wouldn't get the concept still, of those but, of human beings. But, well, <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> but no, but, like, just seeing multiple Spider-Men come in, just in general, I mean, just that idea and that concept, I mean, still a cool concept in general, just seeing live action. So that, plus, again, the Peter Parker story, I think, solidifies the movie. No matter, like, if you have context or not there for nostalgia. Okay. Ringo, what do you think about nostalgia? I feel, I feel like it'll hold up because, you know, we got Spider-Verse before this. And it True. Was, it showed Spider-Man that kids probably did not know existed. That's a great point, actually. And, you yeah. know, it, and it showed other villains like, you know, Liz Octavius instead of Otto Octavius. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I probably would have changed about the film was add a few more toby villain or not toby tom villains because it just yeah it, it, that would have made it hit more especially you know aunt may died yeah you think like vulture and maybe even like vulture Scorpion. and then you know maybe bring mysterio back yeah, mysterio back because i mean he did die in the comics once and he faked his death yeah, he came yeah. right back <laughs> yeah that would be interesting yeah i think that's a good point but that's a good segue, actually. I do want to talk just about the villains in general and, and like, kind of go through each one and talk about, like, some highlights from each one. So, I think we should start out with uh, Green Goblin. So, what everyone think of Willem Dafoe? Really good performance. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm actually glad they got rid of the mask at the beginning. I love yeah, the mask. That's what I was going to say. In my notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the expressions on his face is what really sold it this time yeah like yeah i don't think i don't think we would have been able to see how villainous he was if he was wearing that mask pretty much you know the whole time he was just a goblin because when he was fighting peter throughout that apartment building just oh the laughing gosh, in his that, face mm-hmm, and everything, that was that, that william's face is really what sold that because i don't think i think if you had both of them masked up it just wouldn't have been as good as it was yeah i agreed uh i loved He's such a menacing villain. People are saying he's like better than Thanos, and I'm like, let's not like jump to anything too quickly. <laughs> he was really good. Don't get me wrong. And like, it's I think it, it's really poetic and cool how like he was the very first like Spider-Man villain in like Tobey Maguire's b- movie, and now he's like the final one in this trilogy, this, which is like a yeah. culmination of everything. Yeah. I like that like kind of f- full circle moment. Um, I also saw he in an interview said that he insisted on doing like most like all of his stunts that he could possibly do which yeah. is amazing because he's like he's 66 60, years old yeah so, yeah and he and he's doing great for for doing that like uh it was great and and he i according to i don't know if this one's true according to imdb trivia like in the 2002 movie like toby mcguire movie he um I, this one is true this part but he wore prosthetic like teeth that were like straight and white when he was playing norman osborne to appear like more oh normal and then yeah yeah, and then when he would play goblin he would take his prosthetic teeth out and use his normal more crooked slightly more yellow teeth not saying he has bad teeth (laughs) uh but (laughs) apparently he did the same thing in this movie as well according to imdb trivia i don't know how true that is but i don't know i thought that was that's cool I've heard that before, like with the older movies. And if yeah. you go back and watch the first one, you can actually see it in a yeah. few scenes. It's it's right there. That's really cool. Yeah, I really like also just the the de aging that they do for him and uh, Alfred Molina. Like, I th- it's really looks great. It, it's come a, a long way since the earlier MCU movies. And I yeah. wonder, like, now that this technology is like more advanced and able to do this, do you think they'll? start bringing back more older villains and be able to like DH. you think you'll they'll start doing this more and if so who do you want to see that done to Ooh, Ooh that's a good question ah uh, that is a real good question because i'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think they're going to be doing it a lot to nick fury in secret wars they're that's true yeah. age him up a little bit because i've seen the promo art and he looks pretty gray in that mm, yeah he is. I mean, Samuel Jackson is like seventy. <laughs> he yeah. just looks great for seventy. <laughs> yeah, Daniel. What about you? People in CDH. Like, I don't know. Like me, back to my younger years. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just look like a baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it'd be cool to see it with with Vulture because I know at one point there was a storyline with Vulture Ooh. where he was like trying to steal youth from people. And then like, oh. so if there's like some like weird way that they were doing like the de-aging, yeah, they but can make it like, like a de-aging, like use it as like a storytelling technique, like 
some yeah. like found a youth junk i don't know or like yeah that would be really cool honestly if they do that or they could do uh thanos because i know there's a storyline where his brother brings him back to life and you know oh, we got his brother and we have his now. brother now That's yeah right. will the world be able to forgive harry styles for bringing back thanos <laughs> 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 that's the true test of his charisma uh. before we actually jump into more villains i wanted to talk about this up top but i forgot ringo i wanted to ask you like just about what you do how'd you get started like making these videos these like on tiktok of like sharing these comic book stories because it's really cool i uh i started like pre-pandemic uh mm -hmm. i had a different account i had a star wars account okay i just did star wars facts and stuff and then like i started to do comic book stuff on there because I, I got myself in a corner i was like i i, I gotta branch out a yeah. little bit. i was like i'm running out of stuff to talk about <laughs> and that's then, why uh, our podcast is called whatever we want so yeah. you can never <laughs> be pinned down <laughs> that's one thing i tell people i was like don't put yourself in a corner because it, it gets tough like yeah and then i started talking about comic book stuff and people's like i don't want to listen to that on this page so i, I started a different page and i was yeah. like i have a lot of comic books i've read comic books since i was eight years old so yeah. like a bunch of mine are digital too because where i moved here it's uh my nearest comic book shop is like two hours away so oh like, shoot oh geez yeah yeah so that i was like sucks. i'm just gonna start <laughs> buying digitally yeah <laughs> and uh yeah i just i just started sharing obscure different comic book stories like stuff people's never heard about and then deep diving into characters and I'll, everyone just started loving it. i did it i got inspired with falcon and the winter soldier because i was like oh they're bringing in isaiah bradley i was like oh, oh people okay know mm -hmm. about isaiah yeah bradley. yeah that's really and, cool uh, yeah everyone just loved it and i just kept going and going and i i went from three videos a day to two videos and now like wow that's so the, crazy impressive yeah, that's so a lot yeah <laughs> and i do a lot of research like I work 40 hours a week too. So while I'm at work, oh, wow. my bosses aren't looking at, I turn around the computer. I'm like, comic <laughs> and I'm like finding <laughs> comics and stuff. <laughs> wow. And uh, with the three minute videos, that that's, that's really been helping. Like I've been using the three minute feature for a while. I've yeah. actually been thinking about changing the username because I, I'm not 60 seconds. Right. Anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone always asks me like, would you go back to doing 60 seconds? And I'm like, no, the three minutes really help out a lot. The 60 yeah. seconds, I had to talk really fast in my old videos and I right. had to cut out a lot. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. And I'm so thankful to be doing this. I, I have a lot of people all the time, like recommending stories or just like, I got back into comic books because of you. Wow. That's or, like, awesome. Yeah. You're yeah, sharing before, with a new generation, really. Yeah. That's so cool. And uh, before Spider Man came out, I did so many Spider Man comics. And yeah. I did a deep dive into the Spider Verse and everything. And, yeah, everyone just seems to love it, and I'm I'm having fun with it. Like I tell a lot of people because they're like, "Why Why have you been invited to premieres and stuff?" I'm like, "I'm not in it for the fame. I'm just in it because I love talking about comics." <laughs> That's cool. That's really awesome. I have you like, so you just seem to like really enjoy it. Like I know that I, there's a lot of people that like kind of after that initial excitement and like growth happens, and like you're like I feel like you can burn out almost. Like how do you try to avoid that? I've, I've burned out a few times before yeah. and I've, I've worked through it. Okay. It, it gets rough sometimes. Like, yeah. but my advice to anybody, if you feel burned out, don't do what I did. Don't work through it. Take a uh -huh. break. Cause I ended up, I was like, I need to take like a week break. And I did. And it just, it feels amazing. Like yeah. don't over push yourself. Like yeah. learn to, to take a break every now and then. Like uh -huh. that's, but I do really well with doing the two videos a day. Now uh, I got everything planned out. I get up early, do the videos, upload them throughout the day, and then just go on my day. And then okay. I respond to comments and stuff when I can, when I get my, when I'm on break or stuff at work. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite a struggle because there was one week where I had a uh, strep throat and I could oh, barely geez. talk. Oh. And I actually d tried recording through it. <laughs> my wow. Oh my gosh, dude. Through it. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it was. Like, I had to turn the gain up on my mic a lot. And wow. Like, oh. I was like, hey. And then like took a sip of water and I was like, I was like, okay, I'm going to do like one video a week. And then, <laughs> and then I yeah. did it for like two weeks till I healed up from that. So I was like, I, I can't push myself through that. That's smart. That's really cool though. That's awesome. I, I, I didn't know you worked as well. That's yeah. That's so wow. Yeah, like I do either forty to fifty hours a week because oh I'm doing well, a lot of overtime because of COVID and stuff picking up and production going. So like, do you mind yeah, if I ask what you what you're working on? Oh, I uh, I make Tesla batteries, uh, oh, cool. windmill batteries. Yep. Yeah. So wow, I, I, oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I start them from the very beginning. I, I make sure that it's got 
like it's all like all the stuff that goes in it's aligned uh that's going to be powerful enough to work in the cars and stuff so wow that's crazy man yeah yeah <laughs> wow well <laughs> Cool. I'm sorry to derail there for a second and turn this into like an interview for you. I just wanted to talk about that up top and I just completely forgot and I don't know what made me remember that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's jump back into the world of Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, we were talking about Willem Dafoe, Green Goblin. How about we talk about Doc Ock now, Alfred Molina. Um, what everyone think of his performance again like what you're saying before the de-aging amazing job just get off the back yeah but also like the way that they brought back and like made it made sense to like oh they gotta fix the chip and then like once he's the chip got fixed he's like all like get back in control and back to normal like actually was yeah helping out peter i felt like that was a really like unique and cool arc to see out of auto yeah his arc was um, great in my mind yeah i figured like when uh we saw in the trailer when he got the, the nanotech from Peter Sue. I figured that would have fixed his chip. I thought oh. he was going to be like a good guy sooner, but right. I am actually glad that they played on that more instead yeah. of making him the bad guy the whole time. And one thing that I always thought was hilarious was the interviews he's done where he's talked about, I almost didn't come back to the role because I didn't want to put those puppets back on my yeah. back. Said those <laughs> weighed a lot on him. Yeah. And then he said, when I came in, did the interview and they said, Oh no, 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 it's CG. You're yeah. fine. Like, you don't have to do anything. Like, <laughs> he said that was a big relief. <laughs> yeah. Cause he's an older guy. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And so, yeah, like I actually had a note about this. So like in back in like 2004, whenever the Spider-Man two came out, those were like big puppets that like had like puppeteers controlling them. And it was crazy. There's some cool behind the scenes footage of it. But this one was CG. And I actually saw an interview with Tom Holland that said that Alfred Molina was like always hooked up to like this big rig that would like lift him up because as if like the arms were like lifting him and like yeah. on set, like, he couldn't control when the people would move him. So like you'd be talking to Alf to Alfred Molina just like chatting. And then like he'd start like floating away and he'd be like, sorry, I guess I'm needed over here. <laughs> like in the middle of conversation. So I thought that was pretty funny. I think he did a very excellent job hopping back in that uh doc off. A hundred percent. I agree. And I love just like the look of that character. It's just like a menacing, mm -hmm. like big guy in like a trench coat with like yeah. These arms, like the silhouette of that is so cool. Like that look. Oh my gosh, I just can't get over that. I love how he came in and just didn't care that Spider-Man looked different or had to. Yeah. Like He's like, I'm yeah. going to kill you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. And I, I I was surprised. I thought that when Electro like shocked him in the apartment that that might have fried the chip again. And I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, like, true. When he came back at the end and like pretty much saved the day and like, ripped off the arc reactor from electro i thought like that just shocked me like it, it was a good misdirect I, you? I, ha -ha. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might be bad again and was like seriously going after the spider spider man spider man's yeah i don't know <laughs> I, I actually didn't think about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but yeah so also do you guys remember that like a year or two ago this movie almost didn't happen like sony and disney like almost couldn't play nice like yeah it's yeah. wild that this we, we we could not be here right now talking about this movie there's a variant of us somewhere where we, they haven't yeah. seen it like it didn't happen and we're just, we're just sad, sad. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very drunk tom holland to think about that yes yeah. thank you tom yeah for people that don't know tom holland like called bob Iger like like or did bob Iger call him like at like a pub quiz or something or Can't something remember happened. Who called who. yeah but like tom Holland was drunk bottom line that's the the important part <laughs> uh yep. for in fact and like was like crying on the phone or just like like kind of like begging like please like i love playing spider-man and yeah i don't know but like <laughs> his begging like worked and they played nice so yeah. thank you tom holland and alcohol <laughs> <laughs> i i actually have a little quick little while we're in this little intermission i would like people to leave a comment or review about what villain they would want to see come in. Like we talked about, we we're talking about the villains, but like what other villains would you want to come in? I know we talked about it earlier, like some more of the Tom Holland villains, but like, are there any other villains you would want to come into this movie? You would wanted to have seen maybe like a Spider-Verse villain or like maybe uh, what's that guy from Feast from the PS4 game? Uh, Mr. Negative or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be cool to see him. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Leave a comment. All right. Back to the tank. So, oh, also, so the, the last two villains, before we get to Electro, like Sandman and uh, the Lizard, what do you guys think of them? 
I was impressed with what they did because they did, couldn't have the actors there because they That's were tied up. Crazy, mm-hmm. I know. I was the first time I saw Sandman, and he was still in the sand form in Happy's apartment. I'm like, are you gonna change? Are you just yeah. gonna stay like that? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It's it's kind of interesting that they like didn't have the actors on set, and they like reused the same the footage from like Spider-Man 3 at the at the end when he's like in the top of the Statue of Liberty and like changing that's the same mm-hmm. footage from Sp- Spider-Man yeah. 3 and then when Lizard transforms back into Connors like that's the same footage from The Amazing Spider-Man when he's transforming back so it's crazy that they were able to repurpose that footage and uh just do that that's incredible that they are able to do that now with te- technology but like I don't know I felt like because of that they were almost a little underutilized compared to the other ones at least yeah I feel yeah. like I don't know like, like, for example, in the, there was one part that I just like laughed out loud the second time I like watched it and processed what happened. Like, so Connors is in the back of the van when they go up to Happy's apartment. And then when like Will Defoe like becomes Green Goblin uh, and like, he's like fighting, like the lizard like comes out of, no- like Willem Defoe like chucks P- Peter Parker away and he has like a moment to breathe. And then the lizard like comes out of nowhere and it's like, I told you there'd be consequences. And then he chucks him back inside and then he yeah. just dips. <laughs> like, was that necessary? <laughs> that was such like a petty thing to do. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like maybe they already overspent budget and they're like, we got to throw some lizard shots yeah, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought like, it was really funny. <laughs> I, I saw a theory on why Sandman was in his sand form the whole time that he was on alert, like because he was oh. in a place that he didn't know. So right. He, was, he didn't want the other people to exactly know who he was. Like they didn't want him to right. know that he was Flint Marco. Because right. I saw it was like other people saying like maybe he thought Flint Marco was still wanted in this. Oh, universe that makes sense. Too. Oh, that, yeah. That or makes maybe, a lot of sense, but actually. or also yeah. maybe something happened similar to Electro, where like his power was different and like he had a different energy, yeah. so maybe he physically couldn't get himself to go back and solidify, and to, like, again? solidify. Yeah. so maybe they actually did help him i don't know so that, that was interesting uh but speaking of electro jamie fox talk about his glow up he had oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. oh my gosh i'm not even <laughs> trying these puns these jokes and... <laughs> wow what are you guys thoughts on how they achieved a more comic comic accurate look with like the star I like the way thing. they did it. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I like that it was electricity instead of him just going and finding a, a suit with a, co- star, with a star on it. And slaps on his face. Yeah. <laughs> that would that would have made him more like Matt Dillon from Amazing Spider-Man 2 if he did that. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been funny too. <laughs> and I love the tweet Jamie Foxx put out a while ago when he first got cast. He's like, I'm Electro again, but I'm not blue this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I, I feel like that would have been a make it or break it with him if they would have been like, we're going to CG you blue again. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, I was, I was looking back. I've seen a lot of clips of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 and like that final battle with the blue electricity. Like it does look really cool. Like the electricity once he shoots it, but like him blue is like not it really <laughs> in my uh, yeah. No, like they could have made it work, but it just, it didn't work for that. I know they were going for the ultimate Spider-Man type yep. thing with that, but it just, it, it, it didn't come across well. Yeah. So what did you guys think about him, though? Because he didn't know that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. So how could he have come over into the universe? I've seen some theories. In The Amazing Spider-Man 2, he hears Gwen yeah. called Peter. Okay. Peter. So he knows Peter, but I don't know. It's He doesn't know Peter Parker fully, so I, I guess maybe if you just no peter it's like what strange said these guys came here moments before they died sandman didn't die lizard didn't die they were right. in jail well sandman flew away but lizard was in jail so i guess maybe there's some contingencies to this right maybe you just have to know yeah. the first name at you least know a uh, hey, peter <laughs> <laughs> what are you uh, saying, but no, it goes it goes into um I mean, if we think back to Doctor Strange and how the Ancient One described, like, spells and stuff like that. It's, like, the code of, like, the reality, right? So, think about in that that kind of sense, if you think about, like, going through a query and you're trying to think about, okay, how, like, what parameters am I looking for, right? So, we say that as a joke, like, do you know a Peter? But, like, that could have been, like, one of the parameters. And, like, <laughs> okay, so, you know Peter, but is it this Peter? You know, is this Peter, Peter Parker? It's like a example? code, like, if... <laughs> then yeah <laughs> then yeah no exactly if, so you know a peter then you get transported across the uh, universe 
That, <laughs> <laughs> the worst written code ever. <laughs> yeah. So because it was like mid query or strange cut it off like mid query, that could also uh, kind of explain that. So like it could have been like, okay, this person's like, okay, they know this much, but they're not like everything. You know what I mean? Right, like they didn't right, know right, that right. Peter Parker was Spider Man. Um, I mean, I'm not so it could, it could be something like movie. that. <laughs> it's like the whole thing with Venom too. Like he just knew Peter Parker right, through the, the hive, hive mind, mind, yeah, in the multiverse. So like, yeah, like Venom didn't exactly know why he was there. Right, that's he true. Was yeah. Talking to a bartender in Mexico about Thanos. <laughs> yeah. How how do you? So now we've talked about like the villains, and we'll talk about Venom then in a moment, or we kind of did already. But like, what what do you think they? How do you think they go back? Because I feel like there's like multiple ways they could go back because if they just go back to the moment that they were at like imagine like it's like jamie fox electro he, he literally said he was like i was about to die like what if he just goes yeah. back to that moment he's like wait i'm good boom like what? <laughs> 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 i don't know like i feel like uh that, that... Well, yeah that'd be way worse because like he wouldn't have like ele- electricity powers anymore yeah so just, it just be, like, instant... <laughs> yeah or yeah. will they go back to like <laughs> or do they go back to like the Peter Parker, like, do they get transported to the future and, like, just start living with the, the present version of Peter Parker? Or do they create, like, a bunch of branches, which could lead into Multiverse of Madness, where, like, Willem Dafoe will go back to a universe where, like, 2002, whenever the first Spider-Man came out, um, and then lives on his life. Alfred Molina goes back to a universe where Willem Dafoe has already died, and but in, like, 2004, and then lives off another branch his already life. Sandman goes back to 2000, what was it, like, 7 or something like that, with Spider-Man yeah. 3, mm-hmm. And then those two are already dead in his universe, but he goes and lives another life. So is it making like all these branches and could that be a factor? I feel like that's how it's going to be because when we were looking at, what was it, Endgame and Rhodey was talking about, you know, like, why don't we just go back and right, Thanos? Right, right. Um, he described it there pretty well where he's like saying, hey, if even if you did that, the stuff that happens in this timeline, this reality still happened. You know, like you can't right. change that. I mean, you could if you're like Doctor Strange from like what if and destroy a whole freaking universe. But like right. other than that, you can't go back and like undo things that have already been done, right? So you can make changes, but you can't like un- like change something. So or you know you know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to okay. Make words here. <laughs> what do you think, Ringo? Time travel is complicated. So yeah, there's branches. <laughs> time time travel is a complicated thing because uh, yeah, I think it I think it branches off because we saw that in yeah. Loki, like the branch timelines and stuff. I uh, I watched a private showing and I took my uh, family with me. Oh wow! And, uh, wow! And yeah, we. Uh, my, I was I was crying when like my Doctor Strange went over because I was in tears, and my yeah. little cousin looked at me and he goes, "I hope the TVA doesn't get fixed because they're all dead anyways." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> wow, <I'm> <laughs> yeah." I wonder like, they're variants. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if yeah. people in the TVA would remember Peter Parker because is that's kind of like outside I, I think the universe because they didn't they say like they exist out of like existence like yeah magic doesn't work there because loki tried his magic it didn't right work there. the affinity yeah. stones don't work I, right so dr strange's spell probably would not reach those boundaries i think uh was it uh mobius yeah mobius yeah. i think he would remember it he's I, gonna loki ride it on a jet ski and pick up spider-man and that's yeah, the go. moment we get <laughs> he's like peter i remember you yes and then they're gonna <laughs> sail off into the sunset <laughs> Oh my gosh, Marvel, make it happen, please. <laughs> oh man, now I really want that. Now I'm going to be so sad when that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, well, that's an interesting theory on like just how the villains are going to, I guess, go back. So we talked about the villains. Let's talk about the spider man now. Spider-Mans. Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. Spider-Mans. Spider-Man. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, what do you guys think about... Let's talk about Andrew Garfield. This movie was his big play like his big Mm -hmm. not really redemption but more time to shine because his amazing spider-man movies he did have really good moments but they were just they weren't written like the right wrote the best yeah they they weren't written for peter parker they were more written for like a a serious spider-man but you got to see him come in be like i'm the guest star in this movie so i can just play around and have fun and that's what made a lot of people fall with him in the first movie Mm -hmm. was you know i'm spider-man i can just have fun with this i, I have a lot of quips like that that other spider-man looks like a youth pastor yeah <laughs> that's a great moment i i actually wanted to comment on that sorry i just but you reminded me so i saw this is probably just coincidence but maybe it's something they thought talked about but like i thought it was interesting that 
Andrew Garfield when he's for, like Andrew Garfield has been commonly referred to by many fans as like the best version of Spider-Man, like with all the quips and stuff you were talking about. And when we first see him, he's in a full Spider-Man suit. And then people commonly say that Tobey Maguire, a lot of people say, a lot of fans say that he's the best Peter Parker. And when we see him, he says Peter Parker is street clothes when we first see him. And then a lot of people say Tom is the best combination of him. And when they both meet him for the first time on the roof, he's in like a half torn Spider-Man suit with his mask off, kind of a combination of both. So I thought that was just a cool little, I don't I didn't know. I not think about that, yeah. Thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Sorry, you were talking about Andrew Garfield. Oh, no, uh, uh... I, I, yeah, I think I finished up on that. Oh, okay. Sorry if I interrupted you. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I just love talking about this. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I thought it was also funny. Andrew Garfield, he cleans a spider web. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. so, like that, that's, a, that's a very Andrew Garfield thing to do. Yeah. Uh, I was actually, I just remember this. I was very skeptical on Andrew being in the film for a long time. Like, yeah. I figured Toby would be in there, but. Uh-huh. Drew with him filming Tick Tick Boom, which I really enjoyed that movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. He actually said he had to go to art school for a year to learn how to uh, sing, play the piano, oh, yeah. and dance. So I was like, how did he take the time right. to film this? Like, he deserves an award he just does. for that. I, he that seriously, crazy. I think he did a great job. And, and like, I feel like they honestly made him a little dorkier, like his version of Peter Parker in yeah. this movie. Yeah. And I think that again, goes with what you're saying, like, he's more of a side character, so he has more ability to explore and not have to, like, carry all the emotional weight of the film. He does carry so much of it, though, but, like, um, like, like, the moment in the, in the <clears throat> final battle, when he's like, wait, wait, I love you guys, like, that's just, <laughs> that's so funny, and, like, and he's, I feel like a little dorkier, which I think is a good kind of retconning, not retconning, but, like, changing some criticisms of the first, his first two movies, where he was, like, yeah too cool like a hipster peter parker kind yeah. of thing i don't know yeah. daniel yeah. what do you think of well for me like i i am happy that he is more dorkier is probably the best way to say that i mean it makes again it makes peter more he's not that's like, dorky that's, he's that's, much cooler than i am <laughs> well yeah that's, that's why i was like is he really dorky no like i am dorky but like <laughs> <laughs> but like still like it, it makes him relatable you know in that sense where you're able to be like hey like like we all know what it was like to be like you know Spider Man, yeah. around on I'm just yeah Spider Man all the way. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, and I, I know we also said it wasn't really a redemption story for him, which I agree with. But he did with his redeeming moment with catching MJ. Um, yes, was that was so my favorite movie of the there. entire movie. Um, that was my favorite moment, right? Yeah, it, like not only was it, like the impact of like oh he was able to you know have a second chance there, but then, like, the way he was also reacting to that and realizing, like, yeah, I did right here. Yep. You know, like... You, like you, you caught her. Yeah. So that hit super hard. Uh, I get goosebumps I, just thinking about that <laughs> moment. <laughs> I, I, uh, the, the, after that, the official trailer came out, I made a video about, like, if Andrew's in this movie, this is gonna be his big moment. Yes, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, uh, there's a comic where Peter actually saves Gwen Stacy's sister in the same way like that. And oh, when he's okay. jumping down, it says like in the speech bubbles, I've thought about this moment a hundred yes, times. That's today. right. Yeah. How I could have done this differently. And you've seen him instead of, you know, webbing her, he trying to catch pushes like that, off he jumps, and launches, yeah, he, he propels himself yeah. right towards her. So yeah, yeah like was, yeah, this, this beautiful. This movie was not just redemption for the villains, but it was redemption for the spider men. Like yeah. he, even Toby says, like he was thinking of like ways he could have for years he's been thinking of ways he could have cured Green Goblin and he gets that moment and he also stops uh Tom in the end from like killing Green Goblin and which is like kind of redemption for him killing that guy uh in the first one that he thought killed Uncle Ben, even though he kind yeah. of redeemed himself like by not killing Sandman. But like but yeah, I just I I love like this culmination of not just like this trilogy, but like all the trilogies. Like it's ah cool <laughs> um but yeah so imagine how sad it would be though if like like what if andrew didn't catch mj there oh my oh, gosh that popped in my head oh that would that would have oh. pushed him even further yeah because people in my cinema were like cheering like <laughs> yeah what if she just splatted like, that would be a different oh reaction <laughs> i feel like it'd be like a quarter crew like break yeah thing. the rated r marvel <laughs> they do that <laughs> oh my gosh oh uh, but do you, so I've actually heard a lot of rumors that Andrew Garfield might now go on to like do the Amazing Spider-Man three people are asking for and like 
I, I think it'd be interesting if he was like the Sony version of Spider-Man now. Do you, what what yeah. do you guys think about that? Would you want to see that? What I would like to see is them continue the ultimate Spider-Man storyline with him and then introduce a live action Miles that okay. way. So okay. like, you yeah. know, you could have him for a few movies, but then you have Miles come in and then, you know, his ultimate ending and then have the Sony verse have their Miles, even though they have the, you know, the animated one. Right. They could also have their live action version of it too. Right. I wonder how that'd be though with the ultimate ending with, because you don't have Norman in that universe anymore, and Andrew's I, native one. I guess maybe a clone. Uh, Harry. Uh, the, don't even play with evolving. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe uh, Harry keeps evolving and turning more into a goblin creature. That's true. They kind of did set him up at the end of the the second one. So. Yeah. Okay. They could do that, and then have Secret Wars, and then bring the universes together, and have Miles in the mm-hmm. MCU. Yeah, that'd be cool. I wonder if they're also going to, because there's also, again, Spider-Verse 2 just dropped with yeah, their, like, so trailer for that. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love, dude, oh, I was literally breaking it down, like, frame by frame and stuff like that. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Um, But I wonder if there's going to be some plays, because I know there's also talk before about Tom Holland joining the first one, but then they had to scrap that. So I yeah. wonder if they're going to kind of try to, like, work back to that and try to find some way to bring, like, that version of Miles into live action somehow. Um, I think they might. So, because the second one just seems like they're playing off Spider Geddon, and yep. uh, you know the okay. inheritors are going to be a big part of that. They got to go around the multiverse, getting the spider totems to come together. Oh, so yep. I feel like maybe we'll have like a maybe a scene where he comes in the live action, grabs Tom, pulls him in, and then Tom becomes <laughs> animated. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, um, and I would love to see like you know because Spider Verse they they did a play on like. You know, this Spider Man was 10 8 or what was it like 144 uh, pick, uh, frames per second. And yes. then the other Spider Man were like 120. So I would like to see them have a play like, oh my God, I, I feel different. I feel real. And then like, yeah, in the animation. And, and then Tom's like, oh man, this feels weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be really cool. I love those just tech, little techniques they do. There, there was one. Oh, I, I love the technique they've kind of started of establishing in Marvel. And it's at the very, very beginning, like as the Marvel credits, like Marvel Studios logo is is rolling in the very beginning they've started like kind of setting up exposition because you, you you know we're going to sit through that logo so they're using that to like set up exposition like in this one they do the J. Jonah Jameson like dialogue that shows that he that, that reveals to the world and catches us up from the last movie um that he's sp- that Peter Parker Spider-Man the Mysterio yeah. message and like I just really like that 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 like is a good way to catch us up, and I know a lot of other Marvel movies have done that, like kind of more subtly. Like I think Guardians of the Galaxy, like will do like a special song to kind of set the tone and the mood yep. of the next scene. I, I remember I think Infinity War did it really well, where they showed they played some menacing music and then the Asgardian like distress signal as like the Thanos attack happened. So I just mm-hmm. I, I really like because like, you're sitting through like a 20 second logo. Like why not like make use of that and like put it as part of exposition in the story. So I really just like that filmmaking technique that Marvel has started doing. But yeah. So I want to, we want to, let's talk about Toby. Uh, Toby McGuire, man. what do you guys think of him in this? Let Daniel go first. I went first on Andrew. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, no I, thoughts. So I, <laughs> I, no, I love that they brought him back. The one thing, the one thing I do wish though, was that he had a little more emotion at some other points? Yeah, his, I feel his like that, most emotional moment was when was like uh, when, when he's Tom talking about was the like, Avengers, the plan, and he yeah, was yeah, like the, the Avengers, Avengers. Earth's mighty. He's like, "How is this happening?" I, I yeah. love that moment. <laughs> <laughs> he just like shouted out of nowhere. I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> but that's also his um, version. That's Tobey Maguire's version of Spider-Man. Yeah, no, I feel like, like he's that's more very like, true to the character. Yeah, that's the thing. So it, it's the age of it where. We've gone like again, like these different versions. He's also of, probably like, so after. tired of just doing Spider Man. He's like uh, like yeah, forty true. now. He looks great in that Spider Man outfit for his age though. Like yeah. seriously yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah. But sorry, Daniel, I didn't uh, interrupt you. But no, what is it? Uh he is technically one year younger than Peter B. Parker from Spider Verse. Yeah. So put oh, that geez. into perspective. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> like that's another thing too. Like he he had like some notes here and there. Like he wasn't like saying what was going on in his universe and like his past but like how about like mj, and like MJ making it work. it's complicated so maybe she forgave him for hitting him at the at spider-man 3 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Forgave uh, him for his like emo year. For his like emo phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was all. It was the alien. It wasn't me. Please, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Um, imagine all spider-man <laughs> is just like a story peter parker's made up to like explain to mj why he's like weird <laughs> like, he's all, <laughs> like he's not actually spider-man he is just a youth pastor with like problems <laughs> but no i i love seeing him back um and like you said like really his back oh yeah his back all the way yeah that was such a f- i laughed out loud i was like one of the only ones that laughed out loud when he's like oh my back i was like ah <laughs> in the movie theater <laughs> hey can you crack it and he's like yeah, actually, like, like I love th- that's another thing too. It's also really important in the animation is like having like thinking moments and like when you just have him there for something. He's like, "Wait, this is me. Like, I can trust me to crack my. Back. I can trust like, myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Ringo, about about Toby? I I was happy to see him. Like, I yeah. love how he came in in civilian clothes and not wearing his spider uniform because it just really shows like his maturity. Like, he yeah. is the oldest Peter there. Like, he's the most wizened and. uh yeah just with most experience and i liked how it came in he's like i was looking for your peter parker too like he was gonna go talk to him like ap yeah. what's wrong <laughs> like tell me what happened Why yeah, is everything yeah all messed up yeah like i was actually kind of scared for a minute like is he not gonna suit up because i was like where's i know suit? i know <laughs> I was like, are you gonna do this to us are you gonna give us hip, uh toby and uh, and not have him suit up i was like did his powers fully go away like did the spider-man two thing and he, he's not able to do back? it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I did have a web block, you know? <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to see more of them, like, freak out about the organic web shooting. Like, that was, I love that. That was yeah. a funny, <laughs> funny moment. How did he's like, I don't want to talk about that. And they're like, no, like, what? how? Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I love, I literally saw, like, someone, like, a year ago make a video. Like, whenever the, these rumors first came out, someone made a video about, like, that moment like wouldn't it be funny if like they talk about the web shooters and then it happened i was like am i like in a dream i am am i in the matrix or something (laughs) i was really hoping that web blood scene would have been in there from that you know leaked video yeah 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 i was like i I really i was like because the way he looked like what i was like yeah i want to see that but yeah yeah and i really like the way marvel the official marvel webpage uh labeled toby because he's the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Oh, and okay. Andrew oh. is the amazing Spider-Man. And then I think Tom is just MCU Spider-Man. But it's just, I, I really it's like just that they... Unknown, because yeah. no one has record of him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they're like, no, we don't, we don't know who that <laughs> this, is. Who's this random kid on our website? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I am, I, 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 I like that. Because I was like, yeah, he is the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he is the youth past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he calls, he's like, to, he's talking to Andrew, like, hyping up. He's like, you're amazing. And I was like, yeah. ah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I, uh, I like the whole back thing because I was like, when, when I saw it, I thought about it. And then I saw everyone online talking about it. He's talking about his back hurting because he carried the franchise for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That is, that's good. That's oh. true. Yeah. I, I liked Toby in this. I liked when all three spider man like, swung in and they landed in order of ha- who played spider-man so it was toby first then andrew garfield then tom holland so i thought that was really cool um, i i love seeing them just swinging together working together like mm-hmm. yeah. it's funny how uncoordinated they were at first and then they realized we're peter we're awkward like this let's, yeah. let's work on this. embrace the awkwardness let's make a band the avengers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh but yeah i also really like how toby does the like finishes the line he like is shocked when he hears tom on starting with with great power and he's like comes great responsibility i was like yes <laughs> like uh, and so i like every time i hear that line i'm like oh it's so cheesy we've heard it a million times but that time i was like no i don't care that was amazing <laughs> yeah it also brings up a good question though do you guys think that Un- uncle ben exists in this universe because like the closest thing we've seen is well yeah but like with what was it the what if what was a zombie episode yeah where he yeah. referenced uh uncle ben directly but that's also a different universe technically yeah. so I, I don't do we ben, think he exists here or no or i don't think so because if they did if he did they would have referenced him already like yeah i think when peter went to visit may there would have been a ben right next that's door, true yeah. or it would have been a conjoined tomb so i don't think ben exists in this universe and i know a lot of people got mad that she said it but i'm like this is a different universe like yeah. every yeah. universe of peter parker there's something different that happens if you make right. it the same it's just you're just retelling the same story yeah, over and over exactly. again. Exactly. That's the beauty of comics. You can change yep. all the time. Like, yeah. All right. So I wanted. To, so we talked about all the characters now that have been brought in. 
So the spell that Doctor Strange did at the very beginning, the reason they were brought in is people that knew Peter Parker is Spider-Man. So I wanted to talk about who else could have been brought over from the other Spider-Man films. So did the other Aunt Mays know? Kind of up in the air about that? Like maybe they uh, kind of knew? I feel like Andrew's Aunt May, especially with Amazing Spider-Man 2, I think she might have known. But I don't know yeah. if Toby's Aunt May would have known. Uh-huh. Like she, she seemed pretty dense about everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about James I mean, Franco? We could, yeah, we could have got. Yeah. I wish. I wish we got James Franco, but Little you know, Goblin Junior. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we could have got MJ. MJ. Kirsten we Dunst. Got, Emma we Stone. Got a win before when? her death. I also thought um, the everyone on the train from. Sp- Spider-Man that 2. That is true. Like, what it, but, but I'm a match. No, but I'm, in my head canon, they did come over. But because they're just New Yorkers, no one knew they were, like, out of place. But except maybe if they got weird glances because their, t- they're, like, technology is exclusively from, like, 2004 and earlier. Yeah. And, like, that's it. They're, like, wearing, like, 90s clothes. And everyone's like, what the heck? So in my head canon, all those people from the train that saw that Spider-Man was Peter Parker are were transported into the MCU. And we just didn't know. <laughs> that whole train transported and like it's right behind another subway yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the train itself just smashed <laughs> <laughs> I also kevin feige said i think in some interview that like they did consider bringing in like uh kirsten dunst and emma stone but they realized very quickly that like it wouldn't service the story because like if you think about it like if gwen came emma stone andrew garfield would be it would be completely different for him and like his moment of catching mj would have been different and like he would have been yeah worried about like how do i bring her back kind of thing so his story would have been very different so i think it's good that they didn't bring them over Um, it would be a funny little you know deleted scene but in the main movie sense like you said storyline it just it wouldn't have been as great as it was because you would have had a movie packed full of characters especially went deep cut and like comic book stuff like you brought other comic book characters that knew peter parker was spider-man yeah i'm glad that they stuck with the live action version yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I think there were—I mean, there were also other characters. I, I want to talk about the, the when Strange was holding back the spell at the very end with the multiverse. I think we saw silhouettes of like the Rhino and Scorpion. Um, mm-hmm. I, so that's interesting to see like who might have come in after that. I don't know. Any thoughts? Yeah, because we saw a Craven Black. Cat. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw some people say Morbius, but I, I've seen the movie three times. I, don't, I haven't seen Morbius. Oh, okay. One of the characters I really would have loved to see that almost broke through would have been uh, an Inheritor, because then that okay. would have been a big call to the next Spider-Man, the you know Spider across the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's like you know the Inheritors they're traveling across the multiverse, killing Spider-Man. What happens when you have three Spider totems in right. the same universe? You're gonna call, and like the walls are already over. breaking down. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's like an open door, pretty much. <laughs> I wanted to actually talk to you guys about, because I actually don't know much about, like, the spider totems. And I think I was talking to you, Daniel, about, like, when Peter Parker is, like, in his astral form and is, like, moving the box around from oh, Doctor yeah, yeah, Strange. Yeah. So you, I, I like, like that connection there. because I don't know so, anything about that stuff. In different iterations of Peter, there's different, uh, again, going to the, the spider totem and, like, Web of Destiny and all that. They all have a special connection to the multiverse, right? But with the spider totem, that's each... Spider being has like like you said a special power. Uh, Cindy Moon Silk, she's the it's a bride of the spider. Okay, so like she's got the ability to control other spider beings if she wants to. Oh, okay, like, yeah. she her eyes get all glowy, and she I think she actually kills one of the inheritors doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I really like that in his astral form. This was the first time in live action we actually saw the lines for his oh spider. yes that's right oh my god yeah. i totally forgot about that dude i love that i like lost it in the theater i totally forgot about that <laughs> yeah i uh so i'm glad that they're diving into more of the mystics uh sense with peter parker and stuff so yeah that's really cool to see like that's you can awesome. go on all day talking about the different powers of the spider totems yeah. miles his power kind of comes through with his power set the power of invisibility okay he can, he can hide himself from the inheritors doing it that way. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. that's wow. That's really strong. That's very cool, and I'm I'm also excited that they're doing that. I'm excited to learn about that. But I want to talk about really quickly some other characters. So Doctor Strange, um, what do you guys think of his use? Because I really liked that like fight they had on the train, but mm-hmm. like it was so 
it, because there's so much in this movie, I feel like it's overshadowed. But like that was an epic fight, like Peter yeah, Parker versus Doctor Strange, like in the mirror dimension, which we t- we called that on our like two podcasts ago. We were talking about we rewatched Doctor Strange and. Uh, I was like, I bet he's gonna send him into the mirror dimension, and it did. Not that that's like a great call; like it's pretty obvious from the trailers. I, I love how when Strange was introduced, he was just so laid back. He's like, I'm not Sorcerer Supreme anymore. I can do whatever. Yeah. I, I don't care. And I love how he's like <laughs> making fun of Wong for making the 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 Blizzard snow in the right the man the house, and he's like, I don't care. I'll put on some sweats. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> laid back, uh, the, Doctor Strange look. <laughs> but the train fight. Oh, and the yeah, mm-hmm. that that was that had to cost a lot of money. But oh my like, gosh, oh, yeah, it was it was amazing. And I like how Peter beat him and Strange was like, oh, my God, I lost yeah. in a to place that child. I'm in control. Yeah. Of. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. The math, man, it gets you. Um, <laughs> I mean, at the same time, like Strange wasn't like going like full kill mode, you know, yeah. but like, that's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, it is interesting. Do you think, though, that Wong will die then so that. Well, Strange yeah, becomes Sorcerer technic- Supreme. Technically, they in order to become Sorcerer Supreme, yeah, the other one has to die. And I know in a few comics, you have to kill the Sorcerer Supreme oh, shoot. in order mm-hmm. to become the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. Oh, so could, oh, so could Dark Doctor Strange kill Wong? Then Doctor Strange kill Dark Doctor Strange. That could happen. That was a lot of Doctor Stranges in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get the three strangers in the next one. The one from the 70s, the animated one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want. yeah. Oh, that's, that's actually really interesting because, like, this has broken up in the multiverse and, like, other cinema, like, other franchises, like, other Sony movies. Like, does that mean now any movie or franchise just in general can be reached through the multiverse technically? Like, could... Technically, yes. So, the, X-Men, the organization like, of in? the multiverse... Yeah. The yeah. organization of the multiverse, it's it's... Multiverse is not even like the end all be all. There's there's like each multiverse of different like brands, right? So for example, there's like the DC multiverse. Like yeah, um, but could that branch over into the Marvel multiverse? Or yes, because no? that's that's all within like the omniverse, uh, right? So <laughs> could Drake yeah, Bell's uh, spy- animated Spider Man come yeah, into exactly. the Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Um, <laughs> and then oh man, it's so crazy because technically in Marvel there's the Beyonders. The X Men outside mm-hmm. of the Omniverse, so mm-hmm. it's oh my gosh, this is yeah, too complicated. The, and if it, you go, on the, yeah, it gets complicated quick. <laughs> if you go in the comics too, there is a character. His name's Axis, and he exists in both Marvel and the DC universe. Oh he wow! He travels over back and forth, and like you said, Drake Bell Spider Man was in the Spider Gad in comics. He uh, oh, okay. he teamed up with Miles Morales. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. Oh, my gosh. It's a short story, but I was like, oh, my God. Because I, I saw it, and I was like, that, that looks familiar. And then I yeah. watched it from Spider-Man. I was like, oh, that's him. It's Drake Bell. <laughs> <laughs> One of the variants I would have wow. loved to seen was, uh, I know it wouldn't have been in the movie, but it would have been hilarious. You have Daredevil come in, and then oh, Happy yeah. sitting there. And then his Foggy Nelson from the old Daredevil movie, oh, which is gosh. John Favreau. Saying, oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's that would have been hilarious. That, that we didn't even talk about Daredevil. That was a quick little inclusion. Have you, you, got, yeah, you dude, guys both seen that. Hawkeye, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What so yeah, do you think we'll see more Daredevil and potentially more Kingpin even though Oh yeah. Some, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what I've heard, Daredevil is supposed to be what uh Rosario Dawson was in the Netflix shows. He's going to pop up oh. in the shows. He's going to be like in and out but like you know he's there. Yeah. And I like that his scene wasn't too much like yeah, it totally. was, just yeah, it was like a sprinkling, you know? Yeah. It was just yeah. to know, like, Matt Murdock is here. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you That's get cool. ready. He's a really good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, just back to back to Tank with Doctor Strange. I agree that people are criticizing that maybe he should have been, like, taken a step back and, like, waited before just doing this giant spell. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. maybe he just asked, is there anyone <laughs> you want to remember you? But also, again, just having watched Doctor Strange, his character is so arrogant that and like he's coming off of just saving the universe he's probably like i can do whatever like yeah. and again like what you said like he's not the source of supreme so he doesn't have that responsibility so he's like whatever i can do whatever i yeah. want and so like i do understand why he just like jumped in and did it because he is a very arrogant character and that's core to him so yeah. he hasn't had anything to change that quite yet i mean like yeah. you think about it 
from Doctor Strange, he became Sorcerer Supreme. So that made his arrogance even yeah. higher. And then, mm-hmm. you know, he saved he the universe. Saved the universe with, you know, Tony yeah. dying. And then so he broke the multiverse in this one. And the next one, he can't even remember why he broke the multiverse. Right. Now he's got to yeah. fix it. I wonder if that is like he might lose Dr. Palmer, like Christine Palmer in the next one. And maybe that will be like his humbling moment. Or maybe he'll lose Wong and that'll be his humbling moment or something. I think that would be the humbling moment. Yeah, I yeah, think Wong, losing Wong. He and Wong have a better relationship than yeah. Palmer oh. does. I didn't even think about it. You guys are going to see a Abomination in Mom. Because yeah. like oh, yeah. Wong have that. Oh yeah, we call Multiverse of Madness <laughs> Mom. Because just, I didn't know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I don't know. I'd be so sad to see Abomination. Like, it's if Wong dies, and then oh. Abomination's just there. Like, no. Well, s- speaking of that, um, <laughs> speaking of that, the Multiverse of Madness post credit thing. People are think saying thinking it might not be Shumagorath, that like one eyed creature. They think it might be mm-hmm. Gargantos, which I think mm-hmm. is a Namor villain, right? Yeah. So, do you think we'll maybe get an int- introduction of him in the near future? Maybe not Multiverse of Madness, but maybe I don't know. You go to see Atlantis. Yeah, I think we will because, you know, he's the main villain of Black Panther, too. Oh, but yeah. I don't know if they'll have, they'll go that deep into it. I feel like maybe it will uh, be Shumagora. In the ocean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. uh, yeah, I don't think that, I, I mean, when you look at it, it does look like him, but I just feel like maybe it's a Shumagorath because they played on it and what if, and, you know, all the Lego sets for Multiverse Madness that's come out so far or and leak so far is Shuma Gorath is the big villain for it. Okay. Gotcha. I always love how Lego sets are like a reliable source. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> What's your source? Wikipedia? Uh, Lego? Oh, you're incredible. <laughs> Lego's almost as bad as Tom Holland at uh Yeah, Spoilers. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's but, that's a quality. Yeah, like Shuma Gorath <laughs> Shuma Gorath in the comics is a cosmic being that just travels between multiverses taking them over and destroying them mm-hmm. so possibly teaming up with the evil strange I, I don't know maybe okay well that's not the question too do we think evil strange is going to be uh was a dark strange supreme that we saw from the what if series or do we think it's a like a duplicate of what we saw from that story to where it's going to be uh like our version of a light and dark doctor strange I think it might be a duplicate because by the end of what if he seemed like like kind of a good yeah, guy. He learned from yeah. his mistake. Yeah, I feel like this strange hasn't learned yet. But I don't know that whole post credit thing. It looks really cool. Like I'm super excited to see Wanda again. Like it's been like almost a year since we've seen her. Really, I think by the time it comes out, it would be like a year. Uh, yeah, I think Miss America was hinted at or like kind of shown in that character. And I, I don't know much about that character. I think she can like open portals to like yeah. certain dimensions or mm-hmm. something. So that'll be interesting to see that. Oh yeah, I like Mordo. Mordo's new look. That's yeah. the last thing I want yeah. to oh, say yeah, about that. Yeah. The long hair is really cool. Um, I wonder. I, I wonder if he was blipped. Like, I wonder if maybe he wasn't blipped, and then those five years when Strange was kind of out of the picture, couldn't do anything. Like, maybe Mordo was like grinding and starting his plan. So he has five extra years now on Strange that he could get ahead and like do this plan. Maybe that would work. That would work. I mean. He he has a lot of magical users to take out. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I saw the theories starting the other day that evil Doctor Strange is Mephisto in disguise. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Mephisto. Uh, uh, I, I, I everyone's like, if we just say Mephisto for everything, we're bound to be right one day. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll strike lightning once, but yeah, I, I don't think I don't think you'll I don't think Mephisto coming anytime soon. It, I've told a lot of people. Marvel and Disney really bank off that overseas money, and a lot of countries overseas don't want any like yeah. things with underworld like the devil in it. Right, so, like, Mephisto yeah. is going to be taking a back seat for a while. Oh well, it'd be cool to see if like Sony went that way though. Like maybe I feel if like they Sony started, would. I mean, they're starting getting the supernatural stuff with yeah. like, Morbius and all that. Yeah, so that's Morbius. more like vampire, and that's kind of been explored though. And yeah. uh, they're they're dipping into no two with venom so that's yeah i'm excited yeah. for that okay all right big question do you guys think ned now with his magical ability will be in multiverse of madness <laughs> that would be cool that i don't know that's gonna be unique to see. like <laughs> well do you think he still has magical ability or do you think he forgot that when he forgot peter parker i think he forgot about it because he never opened a portal if he wasn't with peter well, was it looking right. for peter yeah but it's i don't know it's weird because at that I watched the uh the the premiere 
for uh, Spider-Man. And when it showed the actor for Ned and the actor for Wong, they were like pretty close with each other. So I don't really? know if there's something going on. Yeah, yeah maybe some bonding over filming another movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's I think crazy though to see too, like if Ned did become Hobgoblin, that on top of like magical abilities. A mystic Hobgoblin. Like sorcerer Hobgoblin. That'd, <laughs> that'd be, be crazy. Cool. That'd be a cool variation there. Yeah. What did you guys think of, of Ned's in this movie? I want to talk about Ned and MJ and their characters. I think those are our last two we got to talk about. Oh, and Happy. Ned, yeah. MJ, and Happy. <laughs> At first I thought Happy was going to die in this film instead of Aunt May. They can't kill John Favreau. <laughs> you know what happens when you don't date John Favreau? You die. That's what you get, Aunt May. I'm just kidding. I'm completely kidding. <laughs> uh, John Favreau was actually supposed to die, I think, in Homecoming. Yeah. He begged yeah. Kevin Feige not to kill him off. I did hear that. Yeah. Thank you, John Favreau, for yeah. <laughs> begging for that. <laughs> I, I I really enjoyed MJ's character in this one. She wasn't as down in the dumps yes, and everything. Like, I completely this was more agree. her like, coming up, breaking yeah. out of her shell completely agree but she also like at the same time too peter could tell like no, the everyone knowing peter's secret was affecting her and yeah. ned's lives and yeah. i figured like ned was getting the worst of it like uh what was it flash was coming up saying i'm spider-man's best friend yeah he's pushed out of everything and he's like hey i'm spider-man's friend too and no one knew who he was i was like oh man Ned, the guy that pushing share. you towards the hobgoblin yeah for yeah. real for real there yeah. are a lot of things pushing you know what I think looking back, if if and when Ned does become the Hobgoblin, we're going to be able to point to these things and be like, wow, like they had this in the plan and, and like they were planting these seeds. So I think they yeah. know what they're doing. I, I think we might like, see that in the future. A theory yeah. I worked out is if they do remember like what happened and how Peter like changed their lives, that could be a big pushing. Yeah. Like, yep. You he might be messed mad up my life that they yeah, like you were my best friend yeah. and you took that away from me. And he might be mad yeah. that he didn't come back like he promised to like. Especially if he goes like yeah. MJ and not him. Yeah. Which, yeah. Like yeah. if him and MJ are together and then like Ned's over here, he's like, you never came back. Like you said, like, yeah. you promised you would find us again. That, oh, you know, get us in a writing room, guys. We know what we're doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Dang. I, yeah. I really, again, I agree with you. I really liked Zendaya's performance in this one and she was less. Like a just super angsty teen, and she like mm-hmm. had more emotional depth, and I really like their chemistry, Tom Holland and Zendaya. Um, yeah, but yeah, do you guys have any last minute thoughts on Spider Man No Way Home? I feel like we've been talking a while. Let's go back to Hawkeye for a second in the finale. Because <laughs> um. <Okay. laughs> no, because I want to talk about like Kingpin and like any more Spider Man slash... So Hawkeye. <laughs> no, 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 like if slash when Kingpin comes back, right? How do you think I would play out with Spidey in New York and like him? I want Kingpin with that. To come back and be the mayor of New York like he was in the mm-hmm. comics and do the no mask law. And oh. that would really affect Spider Man and every other hero in New York. Like, they don't, right now, they don't have a connection to each other. So they really need to build that up because Wilson Fisk is one of his greatest enemies, too. Yep. Yeah. Other than, you know, Deadpool being one of his worst enemies. But yeah, Spider Man's right up there with uh, Daredevil. Sorry to interrupt, but the next segment, my video kind of cut out for the next part. So yeah, it's just for the next like 10, 15 ish minutes. It's still great content that you should enjoy. I edit around it. All right. Enjoy. What do you think, Daniel? No, I agree. I think that'd be a good way to have them connect. Um, I didn't even think about that, but it would also be a cool way to also bring in Spidey to work kind of with the defenders because now they're like canonized so yeah. it'd also be funny if there was like a moment where he like he does get the face again but he's like yeah. what the heck is this guy because like nobody knows who peter is yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just his it's just his like uh landlord like i gave him my room that room in my apartment <laughs> <laughs> and he never gave me rent like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then toby mcguire out of this nowhere like just fix the door <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping that it would show his landlord, and it was yeah. uh, uh, Dickovich, I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah. Or it was like, or it just like squeak as the door is shut or something. <laughs> Peter's like, I gotta fix that door. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I did find a few more notes. I just wanted to, I missed, but I really like how strange to the end when he's like about to do the final spell. He's like, Hey, everyone who knows and loves you will forget you. He says we because he cares about Peter Parker. I was like, Yeah, it's a good moment. I, I really liked how he held the spell back for a moment too. Yeah, to Peter let him say, say goodbye. goodbye. Yeah. That was really nice. Where do you think that uh, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire like? What's the, what are they going back to in their universes? I think they're going to go back to the exactly where they left, like 
Andrew's going to have to make up for not pulling punches yeah. and going dark for a while. He still has a lot of growth to do. Yeah. And then, and then Toby's going to go back and be like, MJ, please forgive me. Let's not make this complicated anymore. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Um, I do really want to quickly talk about the, the one or at the very beginning when they're going around the apartment, just thought that was a really good one take. Uh, oh, yeah. when he like Tom Holland, like is like, comes back in the apartment is trying to stop closing all the blinds. And yeah, stuff. yeah. 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 <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. But yeah. That is pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with Spider-Man no way home. Is there anything else? Any last minute thoughts you guys want to talk about? I've heard a lot of people complaining about the last, was it two minutes of the film or well, like 30 seconds of the film. Oh really? Where, where, uh, he's just web swinging and there are a lot of people saying they should have had a voiceover. Oh, but like I felt like the no voice was more impactful yeah. than having, yeah. you know, Tom saying some final words before the film ended. Yeah. I, know I if, agree. If you thought like he should have had a voiceover. I don't or... think they've ever like established that as like a thing that has happened in these Spider-Man movies. Like I feel, I think maybe Toby, did he have voiceover? Toby over? did that before. Yeah. Yeah. He so, did like, a few voiceovers. I think that is like more, that would have been okay. But because we've never, I don't think we've ever really had a voiceover of Tom unless he's like talking to Karen, like his AI, yeah. like we they yeah. didn't really have that. So like, and again, he's supposed to be like isolated. So if he's like talking to you or someone like that, that's more of a connection. But I feel like the silence shows again, like he's isolated now. He's alone. I liked it because like it showed he's been through a lot. He lost everything, but he's still going as Spider-Man. Yeah. You saw mm-hmm. he was running across the building, sliding across the ice. It looked like he was still having fun. Yeah. It reminded me of the PS4 game op- opening a lot. Yeah. Like this almost like ends where that one starts, yeah. kind of, which was interesting. I don't know, Daniel. Any final thoughts for you? Well, this is what we're talking about. What did you guys think of that final suit? You know, I loved it. I love, I love like the new metallic sheen and all that. Like, it's, yes. Oh, I wish we had just more. That's why I gripe with the last three seconds. I wish we saw more of the suit. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that when he comes back, he's in that suit. I hope Sony or yeah, Sony Disney's not like let's change it. Oh no, no, that suit. Yeah, the amazing Spider-Man mm. suit like that. That is right from the comics. Uh, fi- amazing Fantasy 15 right there. Mm-hmm. Let him have that suit for a while because that's homemade. That's that's the you know, it's Toby and Andrew's suit inspired mixed together. So uh, and that spider on the front. I loved it. Dude, I love that spider. dude. I'm honestly a little worried because we didn't see much of it. That might be them giving themselves leeway to change things because like we yeah. didn't get a good look at it so we can't get attached to it and yeah. know if they change much so i'm attached to but it. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. i want him to still have the moving eyes though i, I hope yes, yes. Saves those i agree there. those that's, that's what really, really makes like. it yeah yeah okay that's all of our thoughts on spider-man no way home um ringo thank you seriously so much for joining us um oh, anytime i had a blast yeah if you ever want to come back on just talk more comic book movies whatever we'd love to have you all right, let me know. Yeah, all right. Or uh, Star Wars. We're also Star Wars. Yeah, fans. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, Book of Boba Fett <laughs> yeah. next week. We're talking yeah, about that. Oh. This week. It's, it's tomorrow. It's from when we're yeah. recording this. Yeah. Yesterday from when this goes out. Uh, but yeah, so uh, is there anything you'd like to promote um, that people should check out? Well, I'm on uh, Instagram, Twitter, of course, on TikTok. If you follow me on both those platforms, I have a huge announcement coming up. I can't talk about it right now. Okay, no problem, no problem. It'll be coming up in about a week or so. so. All right, we'll check that out. It'll all be linked below, so make sure to check that out. Thank you seriously so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Oh, anytime. This has been fun. I love talking comic book stuff. We do too. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Boosh, oh my gosh, what a great podcast. That was a great time with Ringo. Dude. Yeah, thank you seriously again, Ringo, for being on the show. It was great having you. Welcome on anytime. Um, next time, we're going to be talking about Boba Fett. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not really sure how consistent it's going to be. The, the We've been releasing consistently on Thursdays. It might change because I'm moving to LA. I'm going to be looking for a job and like schedule is going to be crazy. So like Jake's going to be a busy boy. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, besides that, are you ready for our patron shout outs? Yeah, hit me with them. Cue the Star Wars music. Boosh, got Patreon. Lori, Frank, Rick, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for watching the tier. Give you the shout out if you want to support us over on Patreon. Like is down in the description. You get episodes early, um, the audio episodes, special benefits, cool perks, roll in the Discord, all that jazz and more. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you would like to, you can head on over to Apple Podcasts, leave a review. Um, you can also go on the uh, YouTubes and leave a comment. We will shout them out in this segment. All right, we do have a new comment on our episode with Julia where our, we talked about people fighting each other, like Darth Vader versus mm-hmm. Aang. And co-ed 
Code Ed Gaming said, yes, Vader would 100% win and is incredibly powerful, but the Force can basically bend all matter and gives Vader forms of super agility, strength, speed, and the dark side user feeds off of fear. Aang would be terrified and Vader would consume his fear and power up even harder and could put up a pretty good fight, but ultimately I think Vader's got it. Basically what you said, Daniel. And yep. I may or may not be biased seeing as I have a Darth Vader tattoo covering my arm. Maybe just a little bit biased. <laughs> uh, but just a little bit, but yeah. Th thank you, Coded. Uh, sorry it took so long to shout out. I know you left that comment literally like three weeks ago, but like I said, we recorded these three weeks in advance, the last few. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Ready for that introduction? Yep. Tell me when. When? We just talked about whatever we want to talk about, and now we're done. Blah. Thank you so, so much for listening. Um, I'm not sure if there were any hiccups in this one. But if there was, sorry, you know, new place and it's been three weeks. So we'll get back on it. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.